Hey everybody, Radaman here. Thanks for tuning in to episode 8 of Kerbal Space Program. So last we left off, here is the missions that we have. Uh, explore the Mun, which is rendezvousing two crafts in orbit of the Mun, which is great because we have a rescue mission. So in rescuing Nataus here, we'll also uh, be able to complete the milestone mission of rendezvousing two crafts. Plant flag on the Mun, uh, science data from around the orbit, and... Uh, that is great. So let's go ahead and first off, we will go into our R&D and unlock some stuff. So I want to unlock uh, advanced flight control and um, then let's see, what else do I want to unlock? We have enough for heavier rocketry. But I'm still sort of looking around. What I could start to do is get the older um, aviation. But I'm probably more than likely going to... Hmm. Specialized control would be pretty good. Landing. I'm definitely going to get landing. And then we only have enough science left to get basic aviation. Alright. So there we go. Uh, the reason I want landing is the micro struts that we have for landing gear is not so great. Alright, so this is going to be RHD-8, but I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I can just uh, reuse what we've got here. Uh, so just a quick reminder, this was a satellite stage that we can just remove. We're not going to need a satellite. Uh, and then... I'm going to redesign the surface bay a little bit just so that it's easier to use. So I'm going to stick the goo containers uh, on the top here. And then let's go ahead and add one recharge pack. Actually two recharge packs. We'll, we'll, we'll have a, a large amount of battery capacity. And then stick our science on the edge of the uh, recharge packs, just so that they're a lot easier to reach. There. And that is a fully loaded service bay. Good. And then our science junior. And then additionally, we are going to need... Um, let's go ahead and add some drogue shoots. And these will be on a separate stage. And... Then add some radial mounted chutes, again, uh, on, not on a separate stage, but on the, okay, they're all set up, they're on the original stage, because this craft is going to get a little bit, what we're returning back to the planet is going to get a little bit heavier. I'm going to remove the heat shield from the bottom here, and I know it's a little awkward uh, working like this, add a crew, um, uh, crew cabin here so that we can actually rescue him, or her, I'm not even sure of the gender. And add inline stability and then slap on the heat shield. So the inline stability here, uh, let's see, will allow us to barely, but will allow us to um, rotate the craft without RCS or um, gimbling or any of that. Um, and ideally you want it roughly in the center of the mass of the ship. So it is, I have it on the bottom here so that it is sort of the center of the mass of the top stages of the ship. All right. Now at this point, uh, let's see Delta V, show all. We have enough for liftoff, but barely. Um, ooh, very, very barely. That is impressively low thrust to weight ratio right there. And let's see, is there any way to shed weight? I can drop some of my mono propellant. That doesn't change the thrust to weight really at all. And I think we are maybe all set to go. Now, one of the critiques I've had of past um, episodes is that I'm not doing my gravity turn earlier, but that's mostly because I'm, I'm just slapping SRBs to everything. And SRBs are not exactly the most um, controllable. I can slap wings and winglets on them, um, 
But the only issue with that is they only do so much, and I don't want to flip floppy craft. Yeah, if you all know what I mean. If you've all experienced that. So I'm trying to avoid that. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else I forgot to add here? Uh, yes. I don't have landing gear. So... The, all right, let's close all this. Uh, the first rockets to get removed are these sides here. So what I'm going to do is add landing gear. And I actually don't know if my landing gear will be long enough. Yeah, they're they're too short still for these swivels. Um, so what I could do if I really want uh, my landing gear to work is hide this delta V is replace the swivels with something else, and that's what I'll do. So all these swivel engines are basically too long to have landing gear attached to them. So what I could do is add swivels to the first stage that we're going to kick out and have more fuel efficient smaller engines on these stages like terriers. It is a little weird that we don't exactly have symmetry. It is symmetrical this way however. And then in, ch in making this change here uh, what we'll be able to do is to have the landing gear be able to con contact Mars rather than um, rather than uh, landing on our engines. Okay, and I'm gonna lower them a little bit so that the winglets are also not our landing gear. Okay, so th this is basically what's gonna be landing on Mars. Now, what this does do is change the height of. You know what? I'm just gonna just for my mental health, I'm going to um, have it all be the same uh, because I don't want to be forced to adjust height. Alright, and then I will redo, I'm, I'll am i just redo the SRB stages. So this has a lot less thrust um, than the previous build, but uh, it's more fuel efficient, so we'll have a higher delta V. And what I need to do is restage some of this stuff. There we go. All right, and now the uh, the SRB stage. I'll get that copied over. No, that's not what I wanted. And this will obviously have to be the bit lower, so we'll restage that. Let's go ahead and view the delta V. Now, the only issue I foresee here is a a lack of control um, because I only have one inline stability, uh, so we might want to add some more. And then also um, a lack of thrust if we're trying to circularize. That's uh, could be solved by adding. Uh, liquid fuel or something like that. I think we'll be okay though. Now one of the issues is I don't want to spend forever making an ideal craft. So there's I've had a lot of um, feedback from all of you. It's really useful feedback. It's like, you know, your ships will be more efficient if you do X, Y, or Z. Uh, the issue is time, right? Because I only have roughly half an hour, 45 minutes to create a ship to do the missions. And, and some missions are going to take longer. You know, Duna for instance, won't fit into a very nice, uh, tight, you know, half hour, uh, almost certainly. But um, I'm going to try to keep it succinct. And in keeping it succinct, sometimes I need to... Um, sometimes I can't have it be, you know, perfect. Uh, so I apologize for that. I'm just doing what I can in the time limit that I have, is I guess what I'm trying to say. All right, so rather than having to set this up all nice and perfect, what I'll do is set one of these up and then copy them all, all around. All right, so what we're going to want is, let's just steal this nose cone. 
and we'll lower it a little bit so it doesn't hit the winglet. Now some things like that, uh, the game doesn't really care if there's collision, uh, but I might because it just looks wrong. All right, and then we'll copy this. And we're gonna need to rotate these parts a little bit. So if you hold shift, it does smaller, oops, that was the wrong way. It does smaller rotations than the 90 degrees that you normally get. All right, and then the last one. There we go. And the thrust to weight ratio, hopefully, will allow us to take off on the outside SRBs. I'm just going to need to, oops, I really botched that, adjust these stages a bit. All right, so it actually has just about identical thrust weight ratio uh, that I had before. And let's just um, sanity check this, make sure that uh, it is set up correctly. So we've got, yep, first stage. And then those kick out. Second stage, which is the inside rockets. Yep. And then, all right. That all looks about right. Save. My total delta V does not look all that correct. Uh, one thing I could do is to try to, I'm sort of curious it does make it more expensive, but will this allow me a better thrust weight ratio? Yeah, it will. Okay, that's that's how I'm gonna do it. Um, so let's change this around a little bit. Instead of one SRB on the outsides, we'll, we're gonna have two. Like that. All right, let's hide this. Delta V tool. Eventually, once I unlock, or when I unlock uh, advanced rocket or advanced uh, propulsion systems, uh, we won't need to jerry rig such crazy setups like this. All right. So now, let's make sure that this is all correct. All the outside rockets fire up, yes, and then this needs to be higher. Great. Show delta V. Thrust to weight is good. And then my only concern is strutting. Uh, I could auto strut stuff, but I'm just going to strut it myself. And it's not going to be pretty. I guess I could have uh, strutted it up before I mirrored it. That's okay. It doesn't, doesn't really matter as long as it gets done. And the way I like to strut things is trying to make triangles. So if you look at this, um, these rockets are connected uh, by two points of contact, not just one, so they don't, they won't twist and bend and all that nasty stuff. And then of course the uh, on the bottom here all these struts got all messed up because I uh, started mirroring stuff uh, having not removed the struts down here. So <laughs> there's a crazy network of struts that I need to clean up. Alright, so what I wanted to do is have the inside SRBs strutted to one another and I'll have to fix that and I'm not going to worry about the external SRBs I think they'll be okay not being strutted to one another we'll have to see if this craft falls apart or not it is somewhat um, it's probably more complicated than it needs to be I admit uh, but in the interest of time and trying to rescue Nataus uh, it's just going to be what it is I can't have it be perfect
All right, where did that... No, oh, it's here, okay. All right, so this all looks good. Checking the delta V one more time. Or the uh, thrust to weight, it's all positive, and we'll try to launch. The game's like, how many parts did you put on this thing? All right, I can already see that the rockets are sort of wobbly. Hopefully, hopefully this won't be a problem. Yeah, there is some wobbling. But we are taking off pretty good here. Very cool looking, right? All the outside rockets firing up. All the inside kickbacks are ready to go for next stage. I could have also brought another uh, crew. We have space in this ship for three. And I only have... You know, I'll, I'll need one empty seat for the rescue. But then, of course, I have an empty seat that I'm not even using. If I was to critique this, maybe I would have added another, uh, another crew member. But all right, so I'm starting to do my gravity turn. I'm doing it a little bit earlier. I'm really hoping I don't start flip flopping or losing control. That's always a risk. The more power you put behind a ship, the harder it is to control, in my experience. So we had um, some of the kickbacks. Yeah, one of the kickbacks got collided with here. So it worked. But what I'm going to need to do is revert to launch. There is the reason I, I feel fine about reverting to launch is, um, yeah, I said I would try to minimize it. Uh, the only, you know, I'm only reverting this one because of an interest in time. Um, I could have just staged it to ditch the solid fuel and to land Jeb safely. It would have cost me, you know good bit of money of course but it wasn't like he was any danger uh, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is I won't revert to launch if I made a mistake that's gonna get someone killed but if it's just a matter of some funds and some time I don't think it's that bad uh, but of course if I like screw something up and I'm about to smack into Kerbin or some other you know Mon or Minmus I won't revert just to avoid the calamity um, I'll own my mistakes if they're fatal so, to fix that uh, staging problem, all I got to do is stay nice and vertical uh, for the first stage here, and then, then I can start doing my gravity turn uh, a little bit later. It's less efficient to do it that way, but it's going to be safer for the, uh, for the craft. So once we've cleared, now I can start tilting. And I don't want to tilt. Okay, so here's the worry here. Uh, if you tilt too fast, you end up flip-flopping. Uh, so the problem that I have with the ship here is that I don't have enough uh, control points. Or really, I just tilted too fast. Uh, probably a bit of both. So what I'm going to do is to add some winglets. Um, to this stage here. And I know I reverted once again, but I want to try to get this rescue done and not have it be a to be continued scenario. Oh, come on. Oops. I uh, removed a rocket there yet. Yeah, there we go. So now these winglets will help to control that flip-flop and launch once again. Hopefully as a, uh, a flight controller, I don't keep making avoidable mistakes like this. But I'm only human, and this is the best I can do. So 
So if we recap what we got to do, we are heading towards uh, Mun here. And we are going to rendezvous with the craft that is orbiting Mun, uh, which needs rescue. Yeah, I can see my Apo and Perry here, if I want, but I'm going to stay in the staging. Now, normally I would be wanting to gravity turn around here, but again, the ship doesn't really allow it. Yeah, my delta views looks really good with all these solid field boosters helping me achieve escape velocity. So let's ease into a gravity turn here so we don't end up flipping like last time. That explosion was just uh, my ejected phases um, stuff colliding with one another. Alright, so my, my uh, Apple apps is enough that I'm entering space, so I'm going to really start to gravity turn here using the uh, solid field boosters to do as much of the uh, circularization as I can because the next stage is all terrier rockets which really truly lack um, thrust and because it lacks thrust it won't allow me to circularize very rapidly so the more I can do now the better I'm actually just going to have the pilot aim to radial out. Jeb. And we are... flopping. Why are we tilting? There we go. Let's not speed time up. Alright, so we want a circularization here. There it is. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. So the node is in, the burn time is about a minute and 20. So at a uh, 110, I'll start burning. What's a little odd to me right now is that uh, I don't have any... Oh, there we go. So here's the circularization phase. I have a delta V of about 6K. I can just... Whoa. My bad. I definitely did not look at that right. Come on, I'm screwing it, screwing it up. Get reoriented. Thought that was the uh, radial out. Oh well, circularization doesn't need to be perfect. So we have Mun as a target here. So once I achieve uh, an orbit, we'll head for the Mun. Now what's cool about this mission is I'll be able to plant potentially two flags. If I have enough fuel, I could maybe even get two biomes done. Um, so we'll have to see about that. I'll try to aim for two, uh, two biomes, do a double trouble mission, uh, but I'm not 100% sure I'll be able to achieve that. And the way to do that is I have Except for Science Juniors, I have um, times two of all of the science acquisition uh, on this craft here. Um, and then we also have two crew members that can take two soil samples and so on and so forth once I do the rescue. So, we'll, we'll have to see. 
Man, this is a real low thrust uh, craft here. But high efficient. Oh yeah, that's right. I didn't add any lights. That's okay. I have my beautiful landing struts. Which are going to be um, better to land on than the micro struts that I had previous. And I don't so I don't even really so much care how perfectly circularized I am. I just as soon as I achieve some sort of circularized orbit, uh, I'll queue up the maneuver for a MUN intercept. All right, so we're technically orbiting now. Good. Good. All right. All right, Mr. Mun, we're coming for you. Gonna add a maneuver to intercept the Mun. Come on. Looks like we're gonna need to, uh... All right, here's the mun. I keep clicking on the wrong things here. All right, we'll add the maneuver here. Where are you, moon? Man, this is bad. Uh, maybe what I'll try to do is, I think I'm on a different plane a little bit. So I'll correct that first. And that will allow me to do an intercept a little bit more easily. All right, so let's warp to next maneuver. This maneuver only takes 20 uh, Delta V which is real cheap. And it doesn't even need to be perfectly timed. It's not that, uh, not that sensitive of a maneuver. Now we're on, we've matched it. It should be a little bit easier to achieve an intercept, I think, as a result. All right. Yep, that's a little bit easier. Periaps. All right, that looks good to me, and let's warp to it. Burn time of a little over two minutes. And it looks like I'm going to eject my one of my phases uh, almost immediately, as you can see here. We're going to have to stage. Another issue I have is I don't really have any ability to build electric charge, so my inline stability... Uh, is using up my batteries, but I don't really have anything to replace the batteries with, uh, replace that power with, because uh, Terrier rockets don't have uh, alternators. Something I find myself constantly forgetting. But that's okay. All right, so let's kick out these rockets. Goodbye. And now for the Mun Intercept. With uh, 5.6k delta V left, that is plenty. Actually, this is a stronger burn than I would even need, as you can see. My Apple apps is um, uh, my orbit is sort of larger than it needs to be, but that's fine. As I said, I'm not that worried about efficiency. The fact that I 
uh, achieve the mission is really my primary concern. If I burn fuel inefficiently and still get home, who cares, right? You know, if it takes me 20 tons of fuel instead of uh, 15, but I can afford the fuel, it's not that big of a deal, in my opinion. So I also have to remember to, while we're in orbit, uh, to get some science. So I'll probably do a crew port or something. Uh, scientific data from space around the moon is one of the missions I'm currently tasked with. But I've pretty much obtained probably most of the science from around the moon. There might be some high altitude science I haven't done yet with some uh, of my science acquisition objects, but the science that you get from the surface is a lot more bang for your buck than orbit, which is why I'm not all that concerned about getting all the science from uh, different altitudes around the moon, uh, because all of the science from the atmosphere, or rather, the sphere of influence in space above the moon, pales in comparison to what you can get on the moon, which is why I'm not all that concerned. Alright, so this is... I have a periaps. Okay, yep, this will work. Let's warp here. So one thing I need to do is to figure out um, if I can intercept two biomes at once, where I will go. It will have to be pretty calculated. I'll have to be on the edge of two different um, biomes on the moon if I want the double science. And I, I, I'd like to try to do that. And then additionally, uh, I need to uh, intercept this pod here uh, first. So that will be my priority. So I'm gonna set that as the target. And let's go ahead and warp to my next maneuver. Circular, uh, circularizing, or rather, orbiting the moon. Looking at my electric charge, yeah, I'm still okay. Now this pod has a very, very low altitude, so... Um, it's traveling pretty fast. Its orbit uh, time around Mun is quick, um, meaning it will be really easy to sort of match it. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is to adjust my inclination to match the pod that I'm trying to intercept to rendezvous which is just a teeny, teeny, teeny maneuver. Barely any thrust at all. Uh, 3.6 delta V. All right, so let's warp to that. And then, of course, I'll set up my rendezvous. All right, so here is this teeny adjustment. Burn time of less than a second. And this will be a, the, I'll just do it myself. The sort of normal maneuver. Alright, that's close enough. Now, uh, for a rendezvous, I'll have to time it so that we intercept one another. So right around here, we get pretty close. We get within 2.4 kilometers. All right, 2.5 kilometers, that's fine. This is a, a little bit larger of a burn, but not a huge one. So let's go ahead and warp to next maneuver. And then what I'll have to do is cut my engines to match it. 
and I also want to start showing flags because I also am concerned with hitting up a different biome um, than we've gone to before. So we've hit up the Northwest Crater and the Far Side Crater. Um, so I have to think about what biome I want to hit now. Or two different biomes. Either the edge of a crater or between two other biomes. Now for rendezvous, uh, accuracy matters a lot. So right now I have a separation of 1.7 kilometers. So let's go ahead and warp. As you can see, it orbited twice while I orbited once. Uh, now I am going to select it as a target and start to match its speed once we get closer to one another. So now my intercept separation will be 1.7 and let's get basically on top of one another before I kill my, uh, I'll just keep doing micro adjustments here. So now our separation is only 300 meters. I'm still uh, traveling towards it at 86 uh, meters per second, which is, of course, I don't need to tell you, um, dangerous collision territory. So now I'm going to cut some more. I'm traveling it at 50. Our separation is 100 meters. I'm doing this without, of course, even looking at the craft. So here is the craft here. Uh, I'm going to reduce the speed difference between us. As much as I can, as best as I can. So now it's only four meters per second. And I'm still traveling towards it. And as you can see, I am very quickly rotating or orbiting uh, the MUN. Uh, so my contract is complete. I have rendezvoused two vessels around the orbit of the MUN. Um, so what I'm going to do actually is go to my space center and see... Because I just did a milestone, I'm going to see what next milestone I have unlocked. Um, I might as well. So this contract is completed. Explore Minmus is the next milestone. So that is landing on Minmus. That's good. I'm very glad that I haven't... Um, I didn't uh, land on Minmus before I got the milestone mission. All right, so back to RHD-8. Let's go fly this. Now, while we're in our space center, time does move. So um, that's something to consider. All right, I'm going to speed up time, get real close, and then switch over to um, Nataus. I'm going to EVA Nataus and have Nataus come join me over here. Now, one thing I hadn't done is to move Jeb out of the pilot seat so Nataus can uh, actually board this thing. Uh, so, for now, Nataus is just going to grab... Oh, this is an awkward angle to approach. And there's the old pod. Grabbing. All right. And... Jeb, you are going to crew transfer. And then that means Nataus can now board. Nataus, you are a scientist. Okay. Well, you're going to crew transfer in there. And then Jeb is going to go back into the pilot seat. And we have um, rescued Nataus. Nataus. For that mission, I still need to um, 
get Natalis recovered on uh, Kerbin. Um, what I'm going to do is do my little uh, EVA report. Doesn't yield any science, but once we bring that back to Kerbin, that's going to satisfy the transmit scientific data from around space around the moon. And now I have to decide on um, a landing spot. So, uh, these little craters here, what I'm going to try to do is land in one of these mini craters. Uh, but first off, I want to unselect you as a target. There we go. Uh, so, let's go ahead and add a maneuver to land in one of these mini craters. And try to get scientific data from within the mini crater. So this will be a retrograde burn, mostly. Burn time of nine seconds. I'm just gonna start burning now. The timing on this is doesn't need to be perfect. This is just basically a deorbiting burn. All right, there we go. Now we're aiming for one of these miniature craters. I hope that this miniature crater has a different biome, but we'll see. We might actually have to aim for one of the bigger craters. So maybe I'll do that. I will add a little maneuver here and let's go ahead and aim for this larger crater here. If it's not possible to do two, two science acquisition trips, two biome visits in one, uh, so be it. What I can do is, oops, that's not what I meant to do. Um, let's go into cheats here and show biomes. This will pause the game for a second. So yeah, as you can see, this crater has a different biome than the surrounding area. So if I land on the edge of the crater, I should be able to have two quick scientific visits uh, back to back. All right, so let's get rid of the biomes visible. And as you can see right now, our current trajectory is landing in at the edge of that crater. Now, of course, the edge of craters is harder to land in because it is steeper. Uh, so that's part of the challenge. Bye-bye, Nathouse's vessel. My Delta V is still 4K. So even though I'm on, um, I'm only on one rocket now, uh, at 4K Delta V, I'm comfortable with that. I'll have to keep the other rocket uh, because it has my landing gear, basically. And I don't have a lot of thrust, and I am only three kilometers up, so I have to start burning um, my descent. And I'm just landing somewhere in the middle of this uh, this crater here. All right, let's kill my horizontal velocity. And come straight down into this beautiful crater. All right, now I can situate myself retrograde, more or less. And I don't know how to calculate a suicide burn in my head, um, given thrust weight ratio and and all that and timing. So I'll just do my best. Now it's good that I have these uh, improved landing gear because this is a steeper landing. In fact, I'm going to rotate a little bit. And the softer you can land, the uh, the easier it will be to land comfortably 
on a tilted surface like this. It's not that steep. All right, perfect. We have landed. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do is have Nataus do the honors here for this first uh, landing. So I really haven't had any other person um, do any science. So we'll do the material study. We'll we'll first do all of the normal stuff, the crew report, um, and then one of these, one side of these uh, science acquisition stuff. The seismometer. Okay, that's done. Close the doors here. And EVA. And let's go ahead and uh, let go. A plop. Not very uh, elegant, but that's okay. Um, little EVA report here. This is from Midland Crater. So let's plant a flag, call it Mun Midland Crater. And we just got uh, credit for that mission. And a surface sample. And heading back in. Uh oh. <laughs> I bumped it weird and lost the ability to control. All right, grab and board. All right, now we're going to transfer crew again. Natas down here, and then Jeb back up. And I'm going to blast off a little bit and aim. to exit this crater and then land back over here and do another landing. Speed time up a little bit. And all we need to do is get outside of this crater and get scientific data from, you know, just, just outside. All right, so we want to do, let's stop accelerating time. Yep, we're out of electric charge. I could feel it. I should have added solar power panels. Oh well. Kill off our horizontal velocity. This is hard to do with no, um, with no, uh, inline stability or anything like that or harder I don't know if we're actually outside of the biome yet outside of the crater uh, it kind of looks like it okay so let's kill the horizontal and then the vertical little hard to do come on ship because it's uh it's hard to control this ship without the uh, inline stability so as you can see I'm floundering a little bit come on oh, rotate 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 yeah I should have planned better and had solar power panels Uh, so a winglet broke. Uh oh, nope, abort. We were gonna tip. I don't need that winglet. And it's light enough that it won't really affect my center of mass. Ah, oh, man. If only I had some <laughs> a little extra electric charge. I won't be doing that twice. Alright. Let's try to come down nice and smooth now.
I'm doing a really bad job of this. Mostly because this ship is not all that controllable. And that's entirely my fault for running out of power. Alright, come on. Let me feather. Uh, I hope I don't have to just abort. Because we come pretty close. So let me try to use micro adjustments here. To satisfy the Kerbal Gods to allow me to land. Oh, oh man, we might actually be right back into the crater. That'd be funny. Alright, crew report. Uh, let's see. Take surface sample. Nope, yep, we're in a different biome. Um, the problem is we're sliding, so I have to get the science quick. Uh, let's board. Yeah, this is very, um... Oh, you know what? I didn't even get, uh, my goo from in the crater. So let's leave that open. I'm going to uh, try to get him to plant a flag on the Midlands and then reboard while it's sliding. So we already have a surface sample. Oh no! Come on! Don't don't do this to me. Uh, EVA report. Wake up, Jeb! Wake up! Quit sliding. Stop tumbling. You are a badass. All right, there we go. And plant flag. Hopefully, we haven't slid too far into the crater, and this counts as uh, Midlands. Uh, Mon Midlands. Let's see. Is that true? Yes. All right, it's still true. Good. So we have uh, scientific data from both the crater and the Midlands. The only thing I didn't do is the goo container, uh, but I can possibly just keep sliding this ship back into the crater and get that goo container that I need, uh, which would be a very funny way of doing it. Realizing that this episode is probably running a little long, but uh, it's hilarious, right? At the very least. Uh-oh. Smack. All right, come on. Don't slide forever this time. <laughs> I love how my, my ship is just like skittering uh, down into the crater. And this is why uh, you want to have low center of mass. Yeah. Uh, dump. I think some of my surface samples have been destroyed as a result. So I am accelerating time here, which is stupid dangerous. Um, because we could topple over. What I'm hoping to undoing is sliding back into, you know, I'm, I think it's too dangerous. I think it's too vertical. So I'm just going to, um, get two goo containers from Midlands and not one from the crater itself. And abort that attempt. Because of the change in mass in the ship, it's actually a little bit easier to control now than it was before. Which is nice. It doesn't feel like a tumbling nightmare anymore. Now, I didn't really time my um, my burn here. I just sort of started to burn. I have enough Delta V that I don't really care, and I'm trying to get home to keep this episode within a tolerable, tolerable amount of um, length. I'm at 55 minutes or so. So, I'm right now just circularizing as best as I can, and then I'll have a transfer burn.
we're circularizing, like, just barely, we're basically flying over the mountains like crazy, which will be fun. All right, I'm just going to add a little maneuver here to circularize it and warp to next maneuver. Because we're so low in, so low on um, the MUN, we can't even warp that fast. So actually, let me just cancel that and just start to prograde burn here. All right, so we're circularized, more or less. It's ugly. Add a maneuver. To get us back to the planet. All right, that burn will work. So let's go ahead and center up on the maneuver, which is hard to do because I have no inline stability. So I'm using gimbling. <laughs> oh boy. And warp to next maneuver. It's a 30 second maneuver, and then I'll basically be ready to land. That's a pretty cool mission, I gotta say. We rendezvoused with a craft. Uh, I'm just gonna burn now. Uh, grab that pilot and had that pilot do science on the MUN. A bit more complicated than my previous ones, which is why it took a little bit longer. And um, the landings, due to the fact that I didn't have any power for my inline stability, was sort of botched and hilarious. I even broke a fin doing it. Uh, I like missions where I'm like, seat of my pants. That's just me, you know, I find that particularly fun. Um, and trying to be a perfectionist at Kerbal Space Program, I find, honestly, if you ask me, often not worth it. Uh, it's way more entertaining to just sort of know, know what you're doing, obviously, but then sort of just, you know, throw yourself into nonsense. It's always nice and hilarious. All right, so I'm bringing this down to 90. All right, we have a lot of uh, extra Delta V, so I can try to get as close to Kerbal Space as I can. So what I'm gonna do is just so that my inclination, I'm more orbiting the uh, The equator, something like that. Uh, if I go to, yeah, this will do. All right, warp to next maneuver. We should be warping fast. So as you can see, we're tilted a little bit and I'm, my next maneuver involves us um, sort of adjusting that tilt a bit as well. My burn time is ridiculously long. No, it's not. It's fine. It was miscalculated. And actually, given that we're right over uh, KSC here, I can just keep burning prograde um, to get myself a nice quick landing here. That just was coincidental more than anything else. It depends on if I have enough thrust to cut my, uh... Oh, no, I should, I should be able to probably affect a landing on this pass. It won't be perfect, but it will be good enough for me. Time-saving measure. I'm just creating a maneuver here as a point of reference, just so that I know 
uh, more or less where to aim when burning. We still have plenty of Delta V left in the ship. It's just a matter of getting the burn on. And we were able to get two flags and two biomes all set up for Mun in one mission, which is pretty cool. And Kerbal Space Center is right around there. Cool looking ship, sort of. Ooh, inline stability. How you are not helping me at all. I think what I'll do is I'll just burn uh, more or less pro grade until I run out of fuel, which is in a, any second now. And we're gonna land in the ocean, you know, not super, super close to KSC, but like I said, interest of time and all. go and now for the descent I don't even uh, because I have a lack of electric charge I am tumbling which scares me a little bit And that's, again, entirely my fault. Can we straighten out, is the question. I'm turned on stability assist. I think we're okay. We, uh... We heated up a bit, but, but not seriously. Alright, drogue shoots will be popped any second now. There we go. Violent deacceleration, and then the regular shoots. And this shoot here, I'm just gonna open at the last second. We have we have plenty of shoots on this craft. Um, Kerbal Space Center is just a quick. Um, actually, we can just cut this shoot. Not even use the center one. Kerbal Space Center is a quick uh, boat ride over. I can see it from here. So we did a pretty good job of getting us, you know, close, I guess. Um, obviously, this ship in the future, I will want some solar panels um, so that we can power up our inline stability. That's something I did not do very well. And I'm going to see this mission to its conclusion. Let's splash down. And... Recovery. This should be a lot of science and a lot of missions completed, which is cool. So let's see how it all turned out. It is almost 800 science, which is great. So we did not gather the goo and we did not have two soil samples, I think. Um, let's see, surface sample. No, we have two surface samples. I take that back. We had to ditch one, which might have been an EVA report. Uh, as for parts, we got refunded 96%, and crew, uh, Natous leveled up and got home safely. So, um, all in all, we completed the rescue mission, we completed the scientific data from surface, and the scientific data from, uh, orbit. Uh, we have a plant flag on Minmus, explore Minmus, and scientific, scientific data from the surface of Minmus, um... So obviously the next mission will be landing on min miss. As for science R&D, uh, we have a lot of science to play with for our next episode. So thanks for um, tuning in for a whole hour and five minutes. I know it's a little bit longer and probably future Kerbal Space Program missions are going to run long like this uh, due to the fact that missions take a while. Uh, if you have any tips, tricks, feedback for me, drop me a line. If you like this, um, like, subscribe. 
if you're a patron of mine and would like one of my uh, new astronauts, Lumen, Tanfred, or Nataus, to be named after you, just let me know. Uh, as a reminder, Lumen is an engineer, Tanfred's an engineer, and Nataus is a scientist. Thank you all for watching. I'll catch you all later. Adios.